Welcome students. I am Dr. Sonu Shiva, Associate Professor, Department of English, Government Dungar College, Bikaner. This session is for MA previous English literature students. You have English language and documentation as your first paper. And in this paper, unit third is focused on phonetics. There you have topics like speech mechanism, consonants and vowels of English and stress. In my other sessions, I will be talking about these topics in detail. For now, I'm focusing this session on just basics of phonetics. Let's look at this diagram. This diagram is related to organs of speech. When any sound is articulated in English, we have active articulators and passive articulators. Active articulators are those that move when we are creating any speech sound. They are like lower lip, tongue and glottis. There are passive articulators that means the organs of speech that do not move when we are creating or when we are producing any speech sound. So in our other, in my other presentations, because I'll be uh, referring to these areas again and again. So let's have a closer look to this uh, uh, diagram, upper lip, lower lip. This is upper teeth, lower teeth. Just at the back of upper teeth, this hard area that you can feel with your tongue is called alveolar or teeth ridge. As you move your tongue on the roof of your mouth, this is called, this area is called hard palate. You move your tongue backwards and then you feel some soft area the roof of your mouth which is called soft palate and then you can see a small piece of flesh hanging from the roof of your mouth this is called uvula here let's have a look closer look at the tongue this is tip of the tongue just at the back of this tip of the tongue that you can call you call it as blade blade of the tongue, then front of the tongue. So when in my other sessions, I refer to front of the tongue, that does not mean this. This is blade of the tongue, or sorry, tip of the tongue, and then this is blade, and then this is front of the tongue. This is middle of the tongue. This is back of the tongue, and then is root of the tongue. This, we all are familiar, esophagus, that is, food pipe and this is trachea which is windpipe. The important area is this glottis or vocal cords which are located right in the middle of this trachea. We'll be talking in detail about this glottis as we proceed with this session. This area is called epiglottis. And we have two passages, that is oral cavity, that is when the air from the lungs, they cross glottis and they escape through the mouth, that is oral cavity. And when this oral cavity is closed and the air escapes through nose, it is, it is called as nasal cavity. I mean, uh, the, the people use nasal cavity for nasal sounds. So this is basically the diagram of organs of speech. Pulmonic aggressive air stream mechanism. In English language, the stream mechanism, the air stream mechanism, which is used in producing sounds is called as pulmonic aggressive air stream. So what basically do we mean by pulmonic is that air, which is coming from the lungs is being used 
to produce sounds. There, there might be a question that why do we need this extra term? But yes, in some other languages, air from the velar region or air from other region is also used for uh, producing uh, sounds. So in English, it is air from the lungs. So we need to focus only on this, that in English, it is pulmonic mechanism. That means air from the lungs is escaping through mouth or through, through nose and the sound is created sound is created then there is a term aggressive aggressive means when the air is coming out then the sound is created there are some sounds in other languages which are uh, created when we are inhaling but in english it is aggressive that means the air when it is coming out of the lungs the sound is created so most speech is produced by an air stream that originates in the lungs and is pushed up to the trachea and the oral and nasal cavities. And we remember that in this trachea, the glottis or the vocal cords are located. Now, when this air, it crosses the trachea and it comes out from the mouth or through nose, there is a lot of modification which happens. This modification uh, because of this modification, different auditory effects are created and we can differentiate between sounds. For example, when we are speaking the sounds like P, at that time, our both lips, upper lip and lower lip, they come together and then they make a complete closure and then air is released suddenly with a puff, P. And when we speak the sound as T, at that time, the tongue is making a closure with the alveolar ridge and then the air is escaping with a puff. So these active and passive articulators, they modify this air which is coming out of our mouth and with this modification, different sounds are produced and we can differentiate between sounds. So there are four separate and interrelated process through which a sound is created. So in this, these processes are interrelated as there is an initiation process that from where the sound starts, then there is a phonation process, then oronasal process, and then finally articulation. Okay. Initiation, the initiation process. In English and most other languages, all speech sounds require a pulmonic airstream for their production. That means the airstream used for speech is always moving out of lungs up to the trachea, pulmonic aggressive airstream. And here we have this diagram of glottis and vocal cords. Just have a look at this. These are vocal cords. This is vocal fold. And this area, this is the open area between vocal cords is called as glottis. So in English, there are sounds which are produced by open glottis and there are sounds which are produced by closed glottis. That means that when air comes out of trachea and moves to the oral cavity or nasal cavity, at times glottis is closed and these vocal cords vibrate. When they vibrate, these sounds are called as voice sounds. For example, Let's have a look at uh, these uh, vowels. All vowels are voiced sounds. So when we speak the vowels like a, uh, a, uh, e, just put a finger on your this part of the throat and then speak a, uh, a, uh, e, and you can feel the vibration over here. That means the glottis is in the closed condition and vocal cords are vibrating. But there are some sounds in English in which the glottis is open and the vocal cords do not vibrate. The sounds like sir. When we say sir and a uh, are joined together, that's why when you say sir, you can feel a little vibration over here. But when you speak this sound without this attachment of a vowel, that is, there is no vibration over here, that means 
that this sound of sir is spoken with open glottis and the vocal cords are not vibrating that means it's a voiceless sound so simply we can say that when vocal cords vibrate at the production of some sound the sound is called as voice sound and when the vocal cords do not vibrate and the glottis is open you call it as you call it as voiceless sound you must have seen that when we catch cold the we are not able to produce certain sounds that is all because our vocal cords get jammed and they are not able to vibrate so we have difficulty in speaking i hope this uh, glottis is clear with all of you let's look at the second process that is phonation process so at the upper end of trachea the air passes through larynx and the larynx contains the vocal cords the space between the vocal cord cords is called glottis and this is where the process of phonation occurs so first is the the air from the lungs is used and it crosses the phonation process of vocal cords and glottis that i've already explained and then this the vocal cords can be manipulated by the speaker and brought into different positions so as explained earlier uh, these vocal folds can be easily manipulated you can open it you can close it for certain speech sounds so there are three positions narrow glottis narrow glottis is when the vocal cords are brought together in such a way that only a narrow space is left for the air to pass through the passage of air makes them to vibrate the resulting sound waves characterized voice sound so whenever there is the uh, there's a vibration in the vocal cords the uh, the sounds are called as voice sounds then open glottis this is state of glottis in normal breathing so when we are sitting we are not talking we are not creating any speech that time our glottis is in the state of open uh, that means the air is escaping without giving any vibration without making any vibration with the vocal cords and uh, as i gave you example of sir sound and also sh sound sh there is no vibration of uh, vocal cords so that is these these sounds are called as voiceless sound so these sounds are uh, created without vibration by without vibrating vocal cords so the condition of the glottis is open then closed glottis the vocal folds are brought together so that no air can pass between them the resulting sound is called glottal stop in some accents of english the glottal stop can replace the sound t in the words like football bottle bit etc look at this word bit when you say bit you don't say it as bitter because that time when you are releasing this the air which is captured in the glottis so it is the 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 t sound in this is a, a position of closed glottis we say it as bit and the air is trapped here in the same manner we say the word like cup and then the air is not escaping so that is the condition of closed glottis we are not speaking it as cupper or bitter uh, the position is the position of the glottis is closed so we the words ending specially in these plosives which again uh, we will be dealing in our further sessions so the position of the glottis is closed the oronasal process so when this air escapes through this glottis this air is going to either pass through oral cavity or it's going to pass through nasal cavity so when the sounds are created when the oral cavity is used these those sounds are called as oral sounds and when there is this this diagram is about the nasal sounds the there's a complete closure and the sounds are created like m m n m and ng that is at that time these uh, this oral passage of the air is completely closed and the air passes through the nasal cavity sometimes you must have seen some people who speak nasalized sounds even the sounds like 
uh, per or ber that are spoken with oral cavity, they have a little bit of nasalization because when oral sounds are created, this makes a closure and the air escapes from here. So there are oral sounds. And if this is not, if there is a problem over here in anybody, uh, organs of speech, and the complete closure is not made, that time the air escapes through mouth and through nose simultaneously. So the sounds become nasalized. Otherwise, either the sound is nasal when there is a complete closure of the mouth and, and when there is an oral articulation, that time this area of uh, the mouth, it makes a complete closure over here so that air cannot escape and through, through the nasal cavity and the sounds are created or are produced by oral cavity. So there are two processes, oral pro process and nasal process. So after the air passes to the larynx, it can go either to the oral cavity or into the nasal cavity. This is a very simple diagram of a human speech system. It's a simple diagram where uh, these things are shown. This is the oral tract or you can say vocal tract and this is nasal cavity and here you have the voice box. You call it as voice box or you call it as uh, or this area as uh, uh, vocal cords, glottis area and then lungs. So even in the exam students, when you are explaining this or the speech mechanism or organs of uh, speech sounds, that time these diagrams are going to help you a lot in explaining things. Then the articulation process. After the air goes to either of these cavities, the oral or nasal, the different articulators modify the air stream to produce different English consonants. Now, these, these active articulators, they modify, they, they change positions to produce different English consonants. For example, when producing the sound P, the lips come together and the air is released with a puff of air, P. When producing the M, the air is released through the nasal cavity, like M. In the same way, we use the different articulators to produce different sounds. So uh, I did talk about that how uh, different area of articulation are used for producing different sounds. We are going to talk about that in detail when we will be dealing with consonants and vowels in detail. But for now, I think you are much familiar with the areas of active articulators and passive articulators, especially how the glottis works and how air from the lungs is used for creating speech sounds in English. Thank you so much. And we'll, in, our, in my further sessions, I'll be talking about uh, vowels and consonants and stress. Thank you.